And I hated the first four books. Rich people are people too. I am Jax Kulak, I'm surprised. Oh, what an idiot. They're the best of the three, including this book is 2049. Murderly Orange Express hated it. Like they didn't like it either. I keep trying to film this video and they keep making noise outside. Now my Keurig is making noise. I was feeling like pooped and annoyed. And instead of ordering Starbucks, I just made a cup of coffee, a Starbucks K-cup. <laughs> I think I can film this now. I'm so just like, you know how irritation is like really draining. So like I'm tired, but not from like doing anything. It's from being frustrated. So anyway, we're gonna try again. I'm not gonna hold up the stack because I have a cup of coffee. Did I say I'm doing my April wrap up? I'm trying again to do my April wrap up. First four books that I read in April I hated. So it's gonna be an, a downer of a start to this video. I'm annoyed. I have coffee. That's not a bad thing. And I hated the first four books. But anyway, let's do it. The first book that I read and hated was Pineapple Street by Jenny Jackson. This I picked for the cover. I had never heard of it. I heard of it after I picked it. And I I can I love the cover. I still do. But this book promised to be like a sparkling, witty, like kind of send up satire of the rich. And it was neither sparkling nor witty, nor really even a send up. It was more like apologizing for the rich, being like, rich people are people too, which is like, okay, yes. Rich people are people too. Does this need to be said? Do, <laughs> what? So like the characters weren't interesting. It also wasn't like an interesting glimpse into like how wild and different the lives of the rich are. It was just like, I, I don't know what the fuck what the point of this book was. It wasn't an exciting story. It wasn't a deep dive into characters. It wasn't like a glimpse into, like I said, like a bizarre, like how strange and different the lives of the rich are. It was just a whole lot of nothing. It wasn't particularly like beautifully written or cleverly written. Uh, just, I don't, I can't tell you why this was written, who this was for, or, or who would even enjoy this. Like there's finally some semblance of a plot towards the end, but by then, first of all, it's too little too late. And second of all, even that isn't all that much. So I, my understanding is that this is a debut that was written by somebody that like works in publishing and like that's why this happened. Having learned that after reading it, um, I am Jack's complete lack of surprise at what it's actually like, so. Anyway, do not recommend. The next book I read, it really hurt me to dislike, and that was The Magician's Daughter by H.G. Perry. This was an anticipated release. I have loved H.G. Perry's uh, Shadow Histories duology, The Declaration of the Rights of Magicians, and Rat Galactic Free Magic. I was hoping that H.G. Perry is just like an autobi author for me now, and this uh, proves that to not be the case. <laughs> I really, really did not like this. It was quite different from the Shadow Histories. This, what this most reminded me of was Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson, which I really, really don't like, and I know a lot of people do. So that being said, if you really like Sorcery of Thorns, you'll probably really like Magician's Daughter. If you did not like Sorcery of Thorns like me, then you probably won't like Magician's Daughter. It's like about a girl on an Irish island and there's like magical secrets and magical societies and magical shenanigans that she gets kind of like, she's at the center of such gets herself in the center of. It's really long and it feels really long and the characters aren't particularly well written and the humor does not work for me and the magic is kind of chaotic and, and it's like too much specific nonsense and I just don't care about any of it. I don't care about the characters or the story or the magic or anything in this book. It was a slog to get through. And I kind of kept hoping that I would change my mind about it, which made it even sloggier. Cause I was like, maybe I'll start to like it at some point, maybe, but I didn't. And when I finally finished it, I had to admit that I had hated it. So it was better than Pineapple Street. So I gave it two stars, but it was not good. The next book I read, I have a full review for on my channel. I think that was the last video I posted cause I've not been posting a lot lately. Cause I've been really, really busy. That was The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi by Shannon Chalker Board. This is also my patron um, buddy read book club book, whatever. We haven't had our chat for it yet as of the filming of this video. Um, I think we're having our chat as like around the time this video is going up. <laughs> uh, so I don't, I haven't talked to my patrons about it yet other than in the discord. And I know there's some people in my discord that did like it, but I think for the most part, they agree with me and did not like it, but it wasn't like universal. There have been books in my discord that we like 100% all of us hate. This is not one of those, but more agree with me than disagree, I think. Well, anyway, we'll find out when we chat about it. Maybe they'll be like, <laughs> you're wrong, Lena. We all love this. You're crazy. I don't think that's true. Anyway, yeah, I, I like I said, I have a full review for this. If you want to hear my full thoughts. Yeah, I did not like this. This is not for me. It's <laughs> the style of the writing is not for me. What it purported to be is not what it actually is. 
and it does a lot of things that like also just personally bother me that wouldn't necessarily bother other people. So yeah, like I said, if you want to see my full thoughts, the review is up, but uh, I do not recommend. The next book I read was the Blaze and Bodice Rivers Book Club book, and that was Splendid by Julia Quinn, who is the author of the Bridgerton books, which I have not read, but I have seen the show. This was the, like I said, the Blaze and Bodice Rivers Book Club pick. It was Amanda's pick, so the live show was on Amanda's channel, and we all dressed up in our Regency finery. Uh, that was, I was very, very fun dressing up. It was not fun reading this book, but none of us liked it. So at least we all agreed this time. That's been so far the case this year. We've been agreeing about the books, which is nice. Yeah, I, I probably hated it the most as usual, but like the, the ladies were not far behind me in disliking it. So it wasn't just like them all liking it, being like, oh, Leanna, of course you didn't like it because it's romance. Like they didn't like it either. Again, I think all of us agreed it was fun to dress up and it was not fun to read this. And, and then, yeah, we talked about both things. <laughs> for an hour. So if you want to check it out, if you missed the live show, I'll leave it linked down below. Um, but yeah, I, I not I don't recommend and neither do my romance reading friends. So that's I think that's pretty clear. Don't read it. The next book that I read was Morning Star by Pierce Brown for the Red Rising read along. The live show for this was on Angela's channel. If you missed it, I'll leave it linked down below. Ton of fun chatting about Morning Star. There is still time to enter our giveaway. Uh, you have until the Iron Gold live show, which I believe will be on Alex's channel. And yeah, uh, it was a blast rereading this. It was a blast chatting about it with Alex and Angela and realizing that I had, I actually had some spicy takes about Morningstar. Like I figured out why this one doesn't work as well for me as the others and why everyone else, like everyone else like seems to think Morningstar is the best one. And I really don't feel that way. And I finally figured out why that is. I'm not saying other people agreed with me, but we uncovered the reason. So that was um, interesting for me having read it now three times. Um, and I'm so excited to read Iron Gold. My favorites are Iron Gold and Dark Age. I love the next gen books um, more than the originals. And I really like the original so I'm very excited to read Iron Gold but yeah it was a ton of fun as always chatting about this with Alex and Angela and I'm so excited to read and chat about Iron Gold. The next book that I read was not on my TBR at all. It's a book that I've owned for a really 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 long time for years. Um, I'm not I don't think I got it when it came out but I got it I think pretty shortly after it came out and I just had a hankering and I, I wasn't wanting to read anything that was on my TBR and I was like okay let, let me read this and I couldn't put it down and so I just continued reading it until I was done. <laughs> and that was The Wonder by Emma Donahue. I'd never before read any Emma Donahue before. I know she's, I think, most famous for Room. I, I, obviously, I've heard of of Room and I vaguely know what it's about, but this is the first of hers that I've owned and read. I own another of her books. I haven't read it. Yeah, I, I knew what this was about generally, again, based on the dust jacket. That's why I bought it. It sounded interesting. I did not expect it to be so unputdownable. Like, I had a, a craving to read it, weirdly, but I did not expect it to be a book that I would I would sit down and start reading and, and I would not be able to stop and I would be ups, like upset at having to go to sleep because I wanted to keep reading. And I would wake up the next morning and be like immediately get coffee and get to reading again because I cannot stop until this is finished. It kind of, for me anyway, it kind of sneaks up on you. Like it's not a thriller and like when you sit down to read like a thriller, um, that's like called, you know, like, you know, only one survivor left by John Grisham. I don't know, <laughs> you know, something like that. Like you expect that to be like, okay, this is going to be a page turner. Every chapter is going to end on a cliffhanger. I'm going to be hooked by this, whether it's good or not. This is like a, a contemplative book about Irish people in the boonies. And it's, you know, it's historical fiction. And <laughs> you don't really expect, at least I don't expect that to be something unputdownable. And the way that, and, and like the, the mystery at the center of it, I don't want to say too much about it. If you don't know anything about it, I think it's best not to know too much about it. Um, the mystery at the center of it, like, it's not like a huge thing. It's not like the freaking Da Vinci Code. Like, it's really small in scope, but it's just so well written, I think. And the way you're like with the main character and like even though there's things that you maybe notice or identify or spot before the main character does there were definitely times when I was like well this is what they're this is what's going on this is what they're talking about the main character doesn't get it I'm like I think it's this and then a few pages later the main character's like oh it's this and I was like yeah I know but it never feels like oh what an idiot this main character is like I got it before she did I felt like genuine to me that she wouldn't necessarily put together what I had put together for various reasons some of which are like the knowledge I have from the modern day that no people didn't necessarily have back in the day. That's quite believably told. I think both sides of prejudice are explored quite well. Sort of like the pro-science and pro-religion sides are decently well and, and balancedly, balancedly, I don't know if that's a word, portrayed. Like her main character is quite prejudiced, but her prejudices sometimes are um, vindicated and but also oftentimes challenged and complicated by what she's encountering. And she's kind of forced, forced to confront her prejudices about some things while she also forces others to confront their prejudices. I think this is so well written. Five stars. No, no question. I really, really love this. 
definitely gonna read more Emma Donahue. So I have another of her books already um, that I own. Frog Music, I think. So I'll read that since I own it and then like go check out her backlist. Maybe Room since that's our most famous one. But this totally worked for me. Surprise. Like I don't know what mystical forces overcame me that I was like, I should read that book. And then it was the perfect book to be reading and I couldn't put it down, but it was a great experience and I highly recommend. <laughs> the next book I read was Blood of Elves, the first, like properly the first book in the Witcher series for the Witcher read along on chapter three podcast. If you missed the podcast episode, I'll leave it linked down below where we chatted about Blood of Elves. I really enjoy the Witcher books, at least to begin with. As I've said many times, like by the end, they kind of lose me. But this is the beginning where I remembered loving it. I still love it. Um, Sapkowski's writing is quite witty and engrossing. And I love some of the banter between the characters. It just reminded me again why I hate what the show did to these characters. There's, the, I absolutely laugh out loud at some parts. It's quite philosophical and political and uh, just really interesting. So yeah, I'm having a great time and I'm really excited to continue with uh, The Witcher books. Next book I read was the book that my patrons chose for me to read and vlog for them and that was Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by uh, Philip K. Dick. It's my second Philip K. Dick book and <laughs> I'm afraid the vlog for this book is a little bit of a mess and I still don't quite know how I feel about this book. It was quite interesting to read having seen Blade Runner and Blade Runner 2049. I really love 2049. That's why my patrons picked this for me because I kept talking about 2049 and I still think that I mean, I would have said the best of the two was 2049, and now I would say the best of the three, including this book, is 2049. It is really interesting how different it is from Blade Runner and in what um, kind of going, you know, reverse engineering kind of, because I, I, Blade Runner to me was first, and kind of seeing what they decided to change, what they decided to take out, what they decided to add in. Some choices I'm like, that makes total sense. Other choices I'm like, huh, I'm surprised that they changed that or took that out or whatever. I can't really, s I, between 2049, I love it. Between Blade Runner the movie and this book, I don't know which I like more or hate more or whatever. I think they're both deeply flawed. And weirdly, I feel like, well, one of my complaints about Blade Runner's film is that it doesn't actually seem that interested in engaging with the philosophical questions it purports to be proposing. And this, I would say, seems more interested in engaging with those questions at the same time. Blade Runner ultimately does actually at least give some, give a, a an instance of like kind of really engaging with the philosophical question, like for, for way too briefly, but it does. And this, it kind of like dances around those questions more than the movie does, but then ultimately like doesn't actually do anything with it. <laughs> and, and at the end I was kind of like, what, what was the point of that? <laughs> Whereas the movie Blade Runner, I feel like it was wasting a lot of my time, but ultimately had a point. I am glad to have read it, and I hope that the vlog isn't too bad. <laughs> but anyway, um, that is that. <laughs> the next book that I read was American Gods. Um, I owe you a video for that, as well as the Smoke and Mirrors vlog. They're coming. This is my third time reading American Gods, and it's a hell of a book. Uh, I'm pretty excited about the video I have planned for American Gods, so I don't want to say too much about it, um, other than that it's coming and that you should get hype. And if you don't watch it, it's fine. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I had a good time rereading American Gods and I think I have a lot to say about it and I'm excited to say things about it and I will forthwith. Uh, the last book that I finished was uh, The Sleeping Murder by Agatha Christie. And this book was given to me by Mara a really long time ago. And I finally read it and I really, really enjoyed it. I think this is my first Miss Marvel that I've read. I've watched all the adaptations of Marvel. But I think, because I've read quite a few Agatha Christie's now, nothing compared to Mara. I don't think I had read any Marvels before. Let's see. I had read Murder on the Orient Express, hated it. And then there were none, loved it. The Secret of Chimneys, meh. Crooked House, quite liked it. I feel like I read one after that. Maybe not. Maybe So this maybe might be my fifth Agatha Christie? Oh, well, Death on the Nile. I read Death on the Nile. Um, so this is my sixth Agatha Christie, I believe. And yeah, I really, really liked it. And I love Miss, I've always loved Miss Marvel as a character, like in all the adaptations I've seen. So yeah, I really had a good time with this more than I thought, because I've seen a couple adaptations of this. So I pretty much knew what to expect. And I knew who did the doing of the done it. But nevertheless, I found it an engrossing experience. And I found it quite tense, even though I knew who the, what was going on, I knew the answer. So, you know, testament to Ms. Christie, it was, um, I, uh, what? I just noticed that this book says that she's the the queen of mister. Is that, I assume that's a misprint, right? That Or does that mean something that I'm not aware of? The queen of mister? <laughs> what? Anyway, yes, I had a good time with this. So Mara, I 
I read it finally. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and um, I'll, I'll read some more Marples because I really do like Miss Marple always have. And I'm glad to find because I like Poirot adaptations, but I haven't liked the Poirot books that I read. But Marple, I like her. So anyway, that. And then I haven't yet finished because um, I put this last because I like to read it right before we have our chats. But Citadel of the Autark, the fourth book in the Book of the New Sun. Um, I'm partway through it, but I'm finishing it like now as of the filming of this video. Like uh, the, our chat is in a couple days from now. So yeah, um, I want to have read it like freshly before we chat, which is why I haven't quite finished it yet, but I will soon. And I'm so excited to chat about it. <laughs> those are all the books that I read in April. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts about these books. If you've read them, if you've not read them, if you want to read them, if you never want to read them, whatever you want to let me know. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, definitely Saturday, so I can subscribe to my Patreon if you feel so inclined. And I'll see you when I see you. Bye.